Welcome to Forbes Talks. Joining me now is Jack Kelly, senior contributor here at Forbes. Jack, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Of course, anytime. This year, Jack, we've heard words, buzzwords like quiet quitting as well as the great resignation. But you wrote about this phenomenon called the quitfluencer. Can you explain? Yeah. Yeah. What happens is this, and I've seen this through my career as a recruiter, is that if you have in a company, let's say a senior person, a go-to person, someone everyone loves, admires, and respects, and all of a sudden they tender their resignation, it sends a chill down the spine of everybody. Like, you know, why did Jack quit? What's going on? What does he know that we don't know? And then before you know it, it's kind of like a contagion effect. So that other people say, wait, if he's leaving, he may know something that I don't, and maybe I'm gonna leave too. So then they start updating their resume, updating LinkedIn, start searching for a new job, finding recruiters, and, and then a few other people leave. And what happens is snowballs. And then recruiters from the outside companies kind of sweep in and say, okay, we smell blood in the waters mm -hmm. because it's hard to find talent. So we're going to now poach out that talent because something must be going on with that company. So then before you know it, you just have so many people leaving and, and the company becomes really challenged what to do next. Why does it seem like this quitfluencer is always the top tier employee? Because you know what? That's who people look up to. Let's say you have, and please, I don't mean this with any disrespect. Um, if you have, let's say, a C minus person, a low performer, if they leave, no one's going to really care that much. They're going to say, okay, in a way, you know, I hate to say it, you know, Brittany, but I'm glad Jack left. He really wasn't adding that much value. And uh, we're not going to be heartbroken. But if a valued employee leaves, someone who has, you know, uh, uh, everyone has a high regard for them, it's a completely different matter. And when you wrote this, a recent survey that you found found that 25% of workers are looking to switch jobs over the next year, while about 45% are fully immersed in the job hunt. Why do you think that is? See, it's interesting. When I wrote it, and this is why I'm so glad we're doing this kind of talk, because it was only really a few months ago where I wrote it, and things changed so dramatically. There's Walk a us through that change. So what happened, like seemingly overnight, there's record high, 40-year record high inflation, and the Fed needs to bring it down. And to bring it down, one of the things they do is hike interest rates. The other thing they do is try to depress hiring. And actually, and this sounds so horrible, but kind of makes sense what their choice jerome powell the head of the chair the the head of the fed is doing is trying to get companies to actually lay off people because his theory is this if more people are unemployed they're not going to have money to buy goods and services and travel and that if they can't do that inflation will come down so it changed dramatically from 2021 where everything was hot everything was great everything was going really well and then you hit into 2022 and now you're seeing layoffs downsizing hiring freezes job offers rescinded so it completely changed within a, a small window of time going into 2023 right now we are on the precipice of that is it a better time to be the employer or the employee it looks like it's going to be a better time to be the employer because it seems that the higher interest rates, the high inflation rates, it's such that companies are going to keep downsizing, laying off people, enacting hiring freezes, job rescissions, and it's it's not going to end pretty soon. So I think for people who are currently working, you want to make yourself indispensable. You want to make sure that your job is safe, you're doing everything to exceed expectations. Um, and if you decide to leave, be very thoughtful. Definitely do not leave without having another job lined up. You know, people did that, you know, six months ago or so. As of now, moving forward, you you want to wait. And then even if you're looking for a job, you want to make sure that the company's in good shape. You want to ask tough questions to see if they're laying off people or if there are any problems. And you have to be really super careful when you make your next move. I want to talk about that. How do you as a person in the job hunt, do your due diligence to make sure that company is in good shape? Yeah, that's a great question because it's sometimes it's hard to tell. 
you know, the veneer, the outside veneer of what companies try to put forth is, hey, we're doing great. So you have to Google and look at everything you can. You want to find out maybe if you know somebody at the company to ask them, hey, what's really going on over there, Brittany? What, what's what's behind the scenes? Um, you want to check out LinkedIn and look at profiles of people at the company. Are you seeing a turnover? Um, you you know you want to uh, if you when you interview you just want to ask those tough questions. It's going to be uncomfortable, but you may want to ask your interviewer, hey, do you have plans to 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 let people go? Do you have plans to cut costs? You know, let me know what's really happening here. And it's awkward to ask, but you owe it to yourself to really get a sense of what's going on, so you don't go from you know you know the fire you know into the you don't go from the pot into the fire or well we could cut that out but you want to be really careful when mm -hmm. you make that move of course and let's say you see you're at your company but you see that top tier employee your work bestie they're leaving they're the quit fluencer what do, would you recommend you do now? Do you either start looking for jobs yourself because you feel a little um, influenced by them, or would you bring your gripes to your management? That's a really great question. I, I would say a combination of all of the above. I mean, before you don't want to ask, act hastily. I've seen this happen over the years. What happens is that, as you mentioned, one of your besties that you work with, they're leaving, and you're like, ah. You know, it's not going to be the same. I'm going to leave. Before you do that, you really want to think it through. I think maybe number one, you want to have a, a conversation with your boss and really get a vibe check to see, hey, how does he or she think of me? You know, am I held in high regard? Do I have a future there or not? This is a good way to feel out. Do I stay or do I go? If you want to go and if you want to leave, you want to be very smart about it. You don't have to rush out take your time, especially during the holiday season, is slow to begin with. When you get into January, the first, second, third, fourth week, that's when the wheels start turning in, in, with respect to hiring. So you have a window if you want to leave, but be thoughtful, get in touch with some recruiters who specialize in your space, maybe find some career coaches who could help you with your elevator pitch, get some resume writers to punch up your resume, your LinkedIn profile, and do it very thoughtfully. I think the problem happens, Lindsay, is that when I did it again, Brittany, <laughs> when the problem is, Brittany, that what happened, <clears throat> the problem is that most people get nervous when they see people leave and you have that chatter in the office, everyone's a little scared, and then you act really quickly without thinking. Don't make any hasty moves, take your time, be very careful, and do a lot of homework. And let's spin it around here. What do you think management can do? They're starting to see people leaving. What can they do to retain their top talent? So what I would suggest, for if I, had, if I was able to speak with the managers and senior executives of these companies, I would say, in no particular order, one, you want to offer psychological safety. You want to make sure for your people, if they make a mistake, something goes wrong, you're not going to be dressed down in public. You're not going to be embarrassed. You're not going to be chided. You're not going to be summarily fired. You know, that you can make a mistake as long as it's an anonymous mistake, learn from it and grow. You want to express the mission. Like, why should somebody stay? You have to give a why. You can't just demand people stay. Um, you know, with what happened with Twitter and Elon Musk, you could see just, you know, kind of being a bully, pushing people out the door, getting rid of them, you know, you don't want that in mind. You want the opposite. You want somebody, like if I had to advise Musk, I would say, wait, here's why I want you to stay. Here's the reason. Here's what we're planning on doing. Here's how we're going to grow. And then tailor it to the individual. If you stay here, you know, Jack and Brittany, here's what you're going to do. Here's why, here, here's your career path. How are you going to grow your career? How are you going to move forward? How are you going to develop? Here's how you're going to stay engaged. And then also, here's the compensation we're going to give you. And here's this stock bonus, stock awards and bonuses. So management can really step in and get their people engaged. Because if you keep your people engaged and you offer them you know, a reason why to show up every day in the office and you're compensating them well and you take care of them, you're going to have a loyal employee base who, gonna, who are going to stay there and be happy and work hard. Conversely, if you don't do that, you're just going to have a lot of attrition. You're going to have people leaving. You're going to have people who are just quiet quitting, people who are acting their wage because they're just, just you know, they're just checking out mentally. 
And right now, on the management side, what is the biggest complaint they're seeing from employees? Uh, managers, up until recently, I think it's going to start changing, they kind of know people were doing the quiet quitting, the cyber loafing, whatever you want to call it, the acting your wage, where you're just going through the motions. You're not really giving it your all. You're coasting because the job market was hot. There are plenty of opportunities. You feel, hey, I could leave and do whatever I want. And management knew that, but they didn't want to push too hard because they figured if they push too hard, it's very difficult to, re to recruit and replace a person and retain a person. So it's almost they begrudgingly pretended that they didn't notice what you're doing. And here's another note. I'm glad you brought that up because in going into the new year, I th if it remains the same as it is now, if you're quiet quitting, if you're acting your wage, if you're just trying to coast, it's not going to go. It's not going to go over because there's too many layoffs, too many downsizing, and they're just going to say, Jack, we don't need you anymore. We'll just replace you or we just will get rid of you. And we're not going to replace the position at all. So heading into the new year, would you recommend following that quitfluencer or when when would you follow the quitfluencer? When will the job market shake out better for the employee? You know, that, that's a really interesting question. And to be fair, I'm not sure. I if I had to hazard a guess, I, I think this is going to last for a while. I think we might be in for a year plus in terms of a rocky road. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be a, you know, a horrible recession. It's not going to be the next depression, a financial crisis. I think it's just going to be a rocky road where we're trying to bring down inflation to a certain level, which is going to try still get people to lose their jobs. Uh, but at the same time, when we look at the jobs report, it looks pretty healthy. So it's a it's a weird dynamic. It's very bizarre. I think if you're a software engineer, a software developer, you don't have to worry as much. If you're a certain other, maybe other type of white collar worker, like a recruiter, because those are ones the first ones to go when things go bad. You know, like with Apple, like of like a hundred contract recruiters just just in a heartbeat like that. So it really depends, and this is what makes it odd too. And this is why I'm so glad we could do these things because it's not one size fits all. You know, some groups may really benefit, others not so much. Well, Jack Kelly, I'm really looking forward to continuing talking about this as the year progresses. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.